on this episode, we talk about Germany, my impending tragic death, and being addicted to the internet. <laughs> it's like an intense show. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Shock, and this is episode 84 of the Ask Gary V Show. You like that, Meerkat? That was just for the Meerkat audience who said my energy was whack for 83, which it was because I was pissed because I lost a basketball game. Deal with it. Uh, one thing I'm dealing with is we just opened a 12th floor, uh, a third floor here uh, at VaynerMedia, and I don't know if it's because it's a Good Friday, but like we are not as packed in on this floor and the energy level is concerning so uh, we'll be taping an episode. Taping, I like that. We'll be recording, we'll be producing an episode uh, from floor 12 very shortly so looking forward to that. Uh, Big shout out to uh, Copenhagen, I'm going there next week. That excites me for a conference Uh, and uh, let's get into the show. India. Ready. All right. Jill asks, one, are you going to pursue my idea? Two, do you get a lot of quality ideas when you crowdsource a question? And three, do you crowdsource ideas more to engage with your audience or to actually get serious ideas like mine? Jill, this is a great question. First and foremost, uh, it is not you, only your idea. That idea of a subscription wine thing has been going on, oh, I don't know, for about five and a half, six, seven years now. I've been pounded with that idea. Um, but to, to answer if we're going to do it, the answer is I'm not sure. Uh, why, I've been getting more involved with the Wine Library lately. There's a lot of different objectives that I want to accomplish that are more top of list. Um, but the uh, the kind of Gary V subscription or Wine Library subscription thing is definitely interesting and it's something we're pondering. I mean, Wine and Month Clubs have been around forever and of course personalization or all the other variables you can add to it. Get it, got it, solid idea. Love your picture, by the way, on Instagram. Um, yeah, I think we get quality ideas and, and and more importantly, quality is subjective, right? To me, it's my form of listening. Uh, and so, yeah, I think I get some quality ideas at times. I mean, the truth is, I uh, uh, to answer the third part of your question, do I do it uh, to engage or, or am I really looking for the ideas? Um, you know, I'm very insulary with my ideas. I don't like getting ideas from other places. Um, and so I do it more to engage to, and to listen and to get a pulse and to collect. And they're inputs. They're lightweight. In, like it would be rare for me to just take Stefan's idea. But hearing Stefan's idea and India's ideas and DRock's ideas and Stunwin's ideas and just they're all little inputs and then it forms some version. I always feel like I've got to put my sprinkles on it. Um, that's been successful for me. And so I think that I'm taking the inputs of the world, that's why I do so much listening, uh, so much engaging, to get to like an 85, 90% place and then I do my thing on top of that and that's where the good stuff comes from. Megan asks, how much of you is creating content versus making appearances and attending social things like parties? Megan, this is a great question. I often say that uh, money and fame don't change anybody. They just expose who someone actually is at a bigger scale. And there's an enormous part of me that believes there's a lot of truth in that in technology as well, right? Um, We're not making, you know, people like, (laughs) I had this funny argument with this guy at Wine Library the other day where he was like, you know, all these phones, nobody, the, the art of like talking to each other. I was in, he goes, I was in Starbucks. This was great. I was in Starbucks and everybody was head down. Nobody was talking to each other. I was like, where were you? He's like, New York. I'm like, all right, let's talk about this for a second. I'm like, do you think 13 years ago at Starbucks that people were just yapping with each other? Like, hey, brother, great shirt. That's not how New York rolls, my man. And so I, I think that all that technology is doing is, is making more visible what we actually were going to do. I mean, I do believe the far majority of people are introverted at first, at scale, by math. If you, you, if you asked me or any, I think, common sense person in society, I think we'd all agree, I'm looking for some reformation here, like there's way more people that are gonna sit 
either timid or middle timid or somewhat timid than somebody who's just gonna roll up. I mean, the reason we love and hate the, like, the people that just roll up and are loud. <laughs> Zoom in real good. You got him? Yeah. Really, on that angle you get him? Oh, yeah. You got Gabe right there? Yeah. Like the reason Gabe, who works at VaynerMedia, is someone that so many people know is because he's loud as shit, <laughs> right? And some people love it, and some people hate it, right? But that's why he's an extrovert extreme. He's probably like singing his song right now. It looks like he's in a meeting. He's probably just doing some Drake lyrics while he works. I mean, and so I, I think that it's important for us to understand that, yeah, first of all, could you be having an addiction? Sure. I mean, look, I mean, I think everybody's addicted to their cellular device. I fully believe that every single person's addicted to their cell phone, like straight up. And so, um, maybe, but I would say this I, I think that it's great for all the introverts or the people that don't like to party and don't like to go out, what they were doing before where they were interacting with the television. I mean, let's call it what it is. Or with like a very small group of one or two friends who equally were close in location to them and were like that. Now people can really communicate at scale with the people that have similar interests, find new people, and all that kind of stuff. And so, I think that you are fine. I think your picture is rad. Uh, I think you and I are friends. Max asks, I'm from Germany where meerkat is nothing more than a cute animal and Twitter isn't even as dominant as it is in the US. Would you recommend that I still go there and wait? Max, I think that the question is very solid but actually you should have been able to level up and figure it out for yourself. Here's what I mean by that. It's the same thesis that I talk about in the US. I, Meerkat is just an animal in the US too. Like, and so is Periscope. And so was Snapchat 38 months ago. Like, like uh, yes, every country, like, here's an answer. Will every country like the same social networking apps and they will hit scale? Absolutely not. It's funny, unfortunately, as Cindy was reading the question, I know that Twitter never popped to real scale at Germany. I was gonna say that, you said it in the question. So look, I, I think that it's super important for you to understand what I mean by sit there and hope. The upside of being an early mover in a new platform that has the potential to pop is so much greater than the downside of going to a new platform and wasting your four or five or 10 weeks or 10 months and it didn't pop and that's why I will always do it. That's about as basic as it gets. That was probably the best way that I've ever articulated it. So thank you, Max from Germany, for putting me in a position to succeed right now because that's it. That's just it. It's just that simple. Especially when you're an entrepreneur and time is what you have, not money. You entrepreneurs in the Vayner Nation are pissing me off to such an extreme because you're debating these things and you cry that you don't have enough money to compete with the big guys, but then you cry about wasting your time. Oh, you mean the only goddamn asset you have besides your raw talent to have any potential to win? Yeah, I think it's a good use of your time. Hey Gary, it's Brandon from Hue and Cry from Washington DC. We do a great job of customer experience in the store. How do we take that same level of experience and put it online? So you know, I think you guys, the team at Hue and Cry, need to really think about what people want in a retail store. So you figure that out. And I think the way you do it is through a, a survey monkey or a survey or, or some data of what do people want in a, in an online experience. I mean, it's about delivering people what they want where they want it. So a lot of times people try to impose the old world to the new world, meaning, okay, so on our website, we're gonna make a video for everything or we're gonna, we're gonna put a live person like app or we're gonna put our toll free number, call net, like, you know, I and everybody in this room wants good UI, UX, I want it to be fast, I wanna get in and out and speed matters to me when I online shop more than, like, it's funny, I actually, and listen, everybody has different behaviors, but actually just be fun. Steve, I'm gonna make a statement and I wanna hear your version of it. Well actually, it, you know, I hate shopping, but if for God, I guess jet shirt, like, I'm trying to think, I just don't like shopping, but I was about to say, in online shopping, 
But I can't even order on like Seamless. Well, actually, I do order on Seamless. Do you know that I'm not capable of calling a restaurant and ordering food for myself? That it is literally one of the three or four things that cripples me the most. Like that, if Lizzie just said, hey, can you call and order dinner? So what did you do before Seamless? Yeah. I had somebody else do it. <laughs> like my wife prior to that, AJ prior to that, my parents prior to that, girlfriends, like I would just never, I never did it. Was it just I, you would choke or like? I, it just suffocates me. The notion of like being on the phone to order something suffocates me. Yeah, anyway, Seamless worked for me, the app, and that's why it works, but where I was about to go was in online stuff, I need fast, in offline stuff, I can like schmooze a little bit, but then I realized, no I don't, and it's like I only value speed because time is the thing I like the most. India, do you like shopping? Yeah. Okay. That's cool, I guess. Uh, okay. Are your habits different online than they are in real life? Like, will you spend 40 minutes in a store looking at stuff, and will you spend 40 minutes looking at stuff on a website? No, I don't, usually on a website, I know exactly what I want, so I'm like going to get it. You're more surgical. Yeah. Yeah, but then shopping in person, I'm just kind of like browsing. Do you use Pinterest or other things in theory that are getting you there online? Um, yeah, Pinterest. Definitely. I bought things because I found them on Pinterest. That's where it gets interesting, right? I, I think there's something in there, and that's where my intuition is, uh, right? Even though I'm not a shopper, I understand shoppers, which is why I led the questions, if you paid attention very carefully. I think it comes down to um, realizing that people want to be surgical and execution oriented on your site, and you as a marketing engine need to be great at creating discovery across the whole web and then fun funneling it to surgical execution on your site. That was tremendous advice. Andrew asks, if you were to tragically die today, how well would VaynerMedia do in the long term without its CEO? Have you been satisfied with Wine Library's performance since leaving to focus on VaynerMedia? Andrew, this is a great question. I mean, I always say everything stems from the top and, and so, I mean, I'm trying to think about how I want to answer this question, meaning AJ's ridiculously capable. Um, I don't think the company would do as well, mainly because he just had his big brother and mentor die. And so even though he's capable, I would assume that he'd be pretty torn up. He better be. And so, you know, I think that he would struggle with that. And I don't think he loves client services enough to like persevere and he'd be like, what is it all worth? Anyway, who cares? You know, like so I think I think Vayner, you know, on the flip side, there's an interesting thing. Believe it or not, this is a weird thing, though AJ is hands down the most capable person to be the CEO of VaynerMedia, I could almost see him not wanting to do it and I could almost see so many people here internally saying no, we have to continue the hustle and so it'd be interesting. I think we built a very interesting culture here. Similarly, Brandon runs Wine Library with my dad uh, and Bobby and Justin's all family. My best friend, my brother-in-law, my cousin, my dad. You know, I, my ego made me think that Wine Library would hurt more than it did uh, without me there. So to answer your question, I am happy with how Wine Library's performed with me not there. That being said, do I think it could be way, 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 way better? Of course, I mean, I think I'm great. Uh, and so do I think the businesses are better off without me than with me? Absolutely not. Are they, are, are they in places where they won't go out of business? Absolutely. Are they in places where they have no prayer of the hyper growth that I create when I'm the operator? That's for damn sure. The biggest thing that I create is the ability to grow big businesses fast as shit. Like, like that's gonna end up being my legacy if I do it one more time. I'm now on business number two that I've taken in a 36 month period with no cash infusion to very big heights. That is a very difficult task in a cash flow basis, not fun, you know, the companies that grow big on funding, that makes sense. Like, you know, the Ubers and, and companies way better than what I've executed, but still, when you have hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, the speed is what I'm talking about. Forget about the business. Well, in a non-funded business, to be able to build that speed, that takes an incredible game of chicken because you're playing cash flow versus growth, being able to afford, you know, you know how proud I am that we've never had layoffs because we've lost a client? That is unheard of in agency world and it's triple unheard of for the fastest growing agency of all time in people. Like, we're, I'm proud. That is what I'm uniquely great at. Um, so they won't grow as fast, um, but there's enormous talent around me that is able to do their thing. Now that being said, 
I'm so much not only the executional leader of my friends and families and business, I think I'm the emotional leader with a lot of them too. And so I, I, I would think that they would really struggle with my absence and would, would, would crumble into little holes. I'm just kidding. I think, uh, I think they would struggle with that. Cool. Um, what did we ask here? Oh, are we doing intro or are we just yeah. Yeah. Oh, question of the day. Yeah. Oh shit, I forgot about the question of the day. Uh, what are you doing this weekend? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.